Okay, let's. <laughs> Can I ask everyone to sit down and, and we begin? Thank you very much for everybody who interoperated in the interoperability interoperability groups. Okay, I'll carry on. Um, so it's been a long day. We've had lots and lots of information to digest. Um, but it's been productive. That's the feeling I've, I've got. Raised issues, but that's what we're here to do, is raise issues and discuss things. Um, so we're going to start with a summary of the breakout groups. If I could ask um, the first... Jochen to to report on the literature guidelines group. Thank you. No, no, no. So um, we had uh, a lot of uh, very useful feedback. Um, first of all, we um, want to make clear that we uh, have, uh, we open air provides a set of guidelines uh, which may have different versions. So we say literature guidelines now have version three and uh, the other two for data increase uh, version one. Um, for the literature guidelines, we uh, have defined uh, a roadmap. <coughs> so there are two steps. Um, we want to finalize the current draft uh, you already received um, in uh, next month. Uh, we very much appreciate uh, your, your feedback. Um, and we want to revise um, the driver guidelines as a second step. and. Uh, so we will publish the final ver version of the literature guidelines in a version 3.x in, in the summer. Again, first step, um, finalization of 3.0, so that new repositories can come and register uh, in the merged open air driver uh, portal. And the second step is uh, complete, finalized, revised version with the format driver guidelines in the summer. Um, feedback on the current draft. There are a lot of, not a lot, a number of typos we need to fix. Um, then we got from Pablo uh, some feedback about other initiatives in, in the UK. Um, just to mention the RIOX um, initiative and uh, vocabularies for open access. Um, they are somehow very specific to the situation in, in, in UK and it, uh, they also define uh, our identifiers for uh, funding and project information. Um, so for open air, th th that will mean that we will not harvest individual repositories from, um, from the UK but uh, from their repository network as an aggregator. Um, another interesting point was that uh, OpenAir can also harvest from uh, the OpenAir compliant uh, pure system, which uh, can also act as an um, aggregator for a number of repositories. Um, Then we discussed um, some possible improvements. For instance, that um, at the moment we have only identifiers to, to a splash page of uh, a publication, um, but it would be very useful also um, that we can have a link to, um, to the full text payload, which might, might be needed um, for text mining operations. And Then we had a short discussion. Is it useful to indicate um, 
the version of the paper, mainly is it peer reviewed or not, um, something which we follow in uh, next discussions because we had different opinions <laughs> about it. And um, then we have some remarks that we should improve um, the introduction of the guidelines. Um, so to widen the scope, not only to EC funded uh, project results, um, to make it more global because then it would allow that um, this kind of guidelines can also be adopted uh, in other parts of the world. And it would be interesting to um, provide an introduction that is not too technical but uh, of interest for decision makers, for instance. And last but not least, that was um, um, <coughs> the idea to provide um, monitoring tools for uh, guidelines um, compliance. Thank you Thank very you. much. Okay. Are there any questions? Just uh, I think that uh, I think it was mentioned uh, that I, I, uh, I think it's important to bear in mind when uh, when we plan to to merge the driver and the open air guidelines is the quen the the global usage of the driver guidelines outside the European borders. So we need to consider uh, this uh, extra European impact of the driver guidelines. Uh, and and uh, when when doing the new version of the guidelines, we need to consider uh, and to have that in mind that we'll that this is not be only used on the context of Europe of uh, of uh, the European repositories, but uh, uh, wider. For instance, now in Latin America, the driver guidelines are being uptaken. And it's and it's also good on that on the perspective that what we are doing here will should connect with other initiatives outside of Europe, so we, we really need to take this in, into consideration. Thank you. <laughs> Any other observations on the, from participants in the group? No. Okay, thank you, Jung. Let's move on to the next group. Lars. Um, in the data group as well. And we have some interesting... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so... Um, yeah, so first of all, um, I think we were confirmed then that the data side is the right standard to go with, so uh, many repositories already exporting in data side, um, or is planning to do it, um, so that's a good part about it. Also that, uh, of course, the, the standard has certain issues, uh, that there's been a lot of uh, trade-offs between granularity and, and ease of use. Um, so, for instance, it would be nice if you could link to uh, specify if you're linking to a landing page or, or the resource itself, the data resource itself. Um, then we were around uh, where to actually draw the line of what to include in open air. That uh, we're saying that we only want to include um, uh, doc uh, data sets that are related to uh, documents but then that uh, might make data sets be felt like they're second class citizens. Um, so the, the conclusion is that we have to start somewhere and this is just the first, uh, first step and, um, and what we are really interested in is the, the linking and the searchability of the metadata that we are uh, including and then we can expand later on. Uh, then we were around uh, along the same lines, which kind of requirements we have for inclusion of repositories if we're just going to take everything. Um, so um, that perhaps we need some kind of uh, data, use some kind of data registry, so, like we have for, for literature repositories um, with Open Door, so that we have some kind of confirmation of the, of the repository that we can uh, harvest them. Um, then we were a bit around the verifiability of the data um, that uh, DUI gives some uh, certain level of trust in what is actually being linked to, whereas, uh, for instance, a URL 
doesn't really provide the, the same trust. Um, and there was a lot of more discussion about this. Um, uh, but for instance, there are some certain big uh, data repositories that is basing their persistent identifiers as, uh, on uh, URNs. And that we have feel that we, uh, that we need to be inclusive and not exclusive uh, in, in that sense. Um, then we were also around the nature of uh, the dynamic data uh, and all the, the issues that are surrounding the dynamic nature and how you're linking to it. Uh, that data might move around between, uh, between repositories or repositories may provide you with uh, different information and how can we actually verify, um, verify these issues. Um, also that the yeah, data changes uh, can change all the time. Uh, depending on the repository and so forth. Um, so what we should do there is that we should, uh, is again, we have to start someplace and we should encourage the best practices uh, and make sure that uh, if people cite it in their papers, then they should also, uh, um, we should encourage them to really make it retrievable in the same form that it's, uh, it's made, uh, that they were using it in. Um, then we were around the relationships that in the data side meet the data schema. Uh, the uh, relationships are very generic and that in our guidelines we perhaps need to be more specific about exactly which kind of relationships that we are interested in and uh, also not open up for a Pandora's box of what we are going to harvest from the data, re the data repositories. Um, yeah, and then we were around the licensing and funding as well, but that was uh, not where the biggest issue were. It was more or less adequate that some repositories, they can provide funding information and, and others, they, they can't. Um, don't know, do you have anything to add? No, I mean, it raised, the session was interesting. It raised a lot of uh, difficult issues about mm. big data, data-driven science, how we're going to handle all of that. and. I think we have to start small and we have to be realistic about what we're going to achieve in OpenN Plus and to pilot some case studies with the people we've invited today, for example, which happens with the data center and producers and some publishers. So it was productive. Yeah, definitely. Process. So yeah, it's very valuable very feedback. Well. Thank you. So that's, you have to move down here now, if you want to see this. <laughs> so um, as we didn't have anything to discuss in the way that we didn't have a you know, guideline that we had prepared that we could discuss, our discussion was very high level, you could say, but it was also very concrete and practical in the way that we have a roadmap now for what to do in the coming months. So what we want to do, is we want to present a draft application profile for Sharif XML for open air, which should be presented at the uh, Eurochris membership meeting in Bonn on the 13th and 14th of May. So if you're interested in this, I don't know, if it's, is it open for everyone to, to participate at the membership meeting or yeah, do you yeah. need to, yes. So it's open for everyone, so, so be aware when uh, and if you're interested in this, to, to, to participate. Um, so the first thing we want to do is to make an open wiki where we will put our draft application profile in which members of Eurochris and OpenAir will work out together. And um, we will present this uh, as an open invitation to the vendors of uh, Chris Systems, uh, I just named three of them here. I don't know how many there are, but Avida, Simpletic, uh, and Atira. <coughs> They're the major ones. Um, and uh, of course, that should sort of scrutinize, review the work that we've done in the draft and come out with a better version of the application profile that we can then present at the open air meeting in, oh, sorry the membership, the Eurochris membership meeting on the 13th and 14th of May. So this is the plan for now. I'm not going to go into 
much details about this. I didn't really go into any further details about what should be done in that way, in a sense. But um, I'll also write some mini examples yeah. that I'll send to all who participate. Thank you. Now we have the NOAT uh, reporting. Uh, I don't know how relevant what we discussed is to larger audience because we were really on a practical level. Uh, so we have a new checklist uh, what national open access desks should be doing and we discussed it. Sir. Uh, we have a draft uh, templates uh, to track achievements, uh, and we briefly discuss it, sir, and then uh, uh, we have a sample country action plan uh, which we discussed, and it was agreed that uh, minimum required efforts uh, from the nodes would be to present some achievements uh, by the end of March, and then every three months, uh, maximum required effort would be to present achievements the day before we have our monthly regional calls. And um, another topic we discussed was communication with member states, meaning um, policymakers, uh, ministries, research funders in the member states, because that's an area we should be exploring uh, more deeply, and one of the reasons why we <laughs> should be exploring it more deeply, because the uh, Council of Europe is organizing a high-level meeting uh, on the 18th of February, where ministries of science and education will attend, and will have to answer three questions about open access developments in their countries and in Europe in general. And uh, we were talking how we as NOAAs could provide help to the ministries who don't feel competent enough in answering <laughs> those three questions they will have to answer next week. Then Gwen presented uh, our next uh, Open Air Plus workshop in Ghent, which will be about linking publications and data, but uh, it will, will be from librarians' perspective, what competencies are required from librarians uh, when they are starting designing their data management plans and linking publications and data, etc. So if you are interested, make sure to talk to Gwen and get more details about this event. Uh, and uh, other issues discussed, uh, we were talking uh, how we could expand open access, Medonet open access tracker to cover all uh, open air plus countries. And uh, we'll keep talking. Uh, then uh, it, it would be good to have uh, a list of uh, open data policies from uh, European countries and perhaps maybe even wider, because that, that's something we, we might find useful when uh, we talk about introducing institutional national open data policies. Uh, um, then it would be good to have a list of data repositories uh, from the countries and uh, a good place would be to update uh, country pages uh, on the open air portal with this information. Some already provided this, some will provide soon. And uh, then we spoke that uh, perhaps Open Air Plus could be a source of expertise for institutions or countries that plan some new open data projects. Uh, and uh, one way is to refer all the questions you received to Nigel or to regional coordinators. Or perhaps we could have something like uh, online resource updated all the time where all those good practices, recommendations, etc., are collected. And uh, yeah, I guess that's it. Hope I'm not missing anything. <laughs> Thank you. Does anyone have any questions uh, from the group or extra observations? So maybe I hand over to, to Norbert now, who could have some summary. 
Hello, everybody, again. It's, it's really not the time, I think, to give a comprehensive summary of what you just heard before, because these were all summaries already of the day. I think it's, it's perhaps more important maybe to just highlight from a more high-level perspective and to remind us what the, what the <coughs> mission of open air is. And that became more and more clear to me, not only today, but over, also over the last day. And that is what started in 2009 as a policy supporting infrastructure for the open access pilot of the European Commission. It's now being transferred to a comprehensive scientific information infrastructure that covers all types of research output and research related and research and teaching related material that is of relevance. And what we covered here um, in MINU have been publications, research data, quiz systems, and also journals, and we had publishers as well. How complex is this? It makes, perhaps I could, can make this clear to you if I just mention are the organizations and initiatives I'm personally involved and try to coordinate uh, throughout the year. And I, I don't think that this will be inclusive, but I guess it mentions the most important one. And of course, beyond Open Air, Open Air Plus from the European Commission, um, it's, um, it's ICORDI, as you have heard, and the Research Data Alliance. Um, it's core with the international uh, perspective of it. It's LIBER for research libraries. It's a G8 and O5 data working group that will meet on the 4th of March um, in the UK again to discuss with not only with European states but also with the up five outreach countries, uh, China, Brazil, um, and so on about data infrastructure, if you like. Uh, this is an attempt to get the Research Data Alliance together with initiatives in other parts of the world uh, to agree on kind of standards and interoperability is always a key issue. Um, then we have, and not to forget, a plethora and a diversity of disciplines, scientific disciplines. And we had the Brit uh, a report from the British Atmospheric Data Center um, I, I attended in October a, a meeting, a rather small-scale meeting uh, at Hingston, uh, close to Cambridge, organized by the European Bioinformatics Institute about linking literature uh, to data. And, and, and many publishers like Nature and, and PLOS and, and, and Biomed Central and so on were present, and representatives from the European Molecular uh, Biology Organization, so both publishers and scientists Again, a lot of the discussions and topics that were presented here about data journals, linking articles to data, what are the right standards for accession numbers to data sets um, is discussed in this group. So, and, and this, and we heard also examples from archaeology. So, um, and in parallel, we have on the European Commission side 48. European research infrastructure project, so discipline-based research infrastructure project as well. And, and then, uh, to, just to make it a bit more complex, we have the discussions in our member states, and that was just alluded to by Irina as well, how important it is to get those initiatives and infrastructures like Open Air connected to the established systems and communication schemers of member states with the European Commission and vice versa, which is not so easy because in, a, in, in, in our countries we have all different systems, how research and representation at the European Commission and research funding is organized. And, and just speaking for my own country in Germany, it's difficult enough to keep an overview of uh, what's going on with all the ministries and research funders. Um, uh, that are there. So finding a right name to address in a ministry that is responsible for a topic like this is not an easy task and we all need to do this in our, in our, in our countries and we try to provide support uh, through this from the Commission side but still it's a challenge. Then we have infrastructure funders like JISC 
Um, Neo Jacobs was out, so here I guess he's already has already gone. Um, the DFG in Germany, Knowledge Exchange, and, and many others in your countries as well. And then last but not least, but that becomes more and more apparent to me um, now uh, being responsible for a university as well as when we sit here together and talk about interoperability and have an interoperability workshop, we all know what we are talking about. If you go back to your institution, be it a university, be it a research organization, and you try to address the topic of interoperability with your presidential board, with the governing board of a university, talk to your researchers who are, I mean, just researchers, but not involved in infrastructure, they will often not understand what you mean with interoperability and what the issues are and what the problems are because everything is digital, so what is the problem? So you can, you can just deal it. So th this really adds to the complexity and makes clear how important it is to get all the communities that were here represented, so the publication, the data, the Chris systems, and your journals, publishers uh, as well, and to have committed people like those who have come together here in Minu to drive this forward because otherwise it would never end. And we, we are only a fraction of all the communities that I mentioned before to get there. So uh, sometimes I'm a bit afraid, but only a bit, uh, whether we can manage this on a European and then it goes beyond uh, to the international and global level. On the other hand, I must say it's quite a challenge and it's interesting as well uh, to, to work on those topics and, and knowing uh, so many um, committed colleagues here from all different fields, um, it's, it's, it's a very good feeling to go ahead. That's actually perhaps um, a closing now with two, I mean, for, for me, I see two main strands for open air forward in the communities here. One is really the existing infrastructure that is already operational with open air to carry on to expand in Horizon 2020 and their various aspects have been raised over the last days. And the second strand is to, to connect to all the initiatives and projects that have been uh, represented here. I mentioned the majority of them. UDAT is another one, uh, um, of course, and iCordy and all the others. So really creating some kind of um, umbrella or platform fundament to connect all these initiatives to come together um, in, in, a, in, in a way that is flexible and loosely enough um, to respond to spe specific needs in communities. On the other hand, to make it understandable and comprehensive in a way that funders like the European Commission or on a, on a wider level, international level, they will understand what we are talking about instead of talking to 50 or 100 different people from different uh, communities. So um, I guess that perhaps um, should serve as a, as a final wrap up, as a conclusion. I, I use the opportunity again, like I did yesterday, um, uh, to thank Eloy and Pedro and, and, and Ricardo and all the other colleagues for a wonderful organization here. I mean, we had such a great dinner also yesterday with, with, with ad hoc music um, uh, presentations uh, coming up as well, I guess, which was really, really nice. Uh, yesterday night, we have those of you who will uh, join us have a wonderful tour and our social program tour um, ahead of us. So thank you very much, Eloy, again, and for our team for, for a great workshop and conference here. Thank you. <laughs> Eloy, do you have some organizational yeah. perhaps? <laughs>